Hello, this is Dr. Hena Asil, and we're talking about preparation of souls. So this is the second part of the chapter on acids and bases in IGCSE chemistry syllabus. So in order to determine which method to use for preparation of souls, we need to determine whether the salt we're trying to prepare is soluble or insoluble, and the reactants or the reagents that we're going to use are soluble or insoluble. So, first of all, we need to know which substances dissolve in water, so their state symbol would be aqueous, or things that do not dissolve in water, so their state symbol is solid or S. Okay, so which substances dissolve in water? You should know. All nitrates are soluble in water, so all nitrates are aqueous. All sodium salts, potassium salts, ammonium salts, so sodium anything, potassium anything, ammonium anything, would dissolve in water. All acids are soluble in water. Things that we use a lot in our syllabus, like barium chloride, magnesium chloride, calcium chloride, these are all soluble. Copper sulfate, you should know, is soluble. Now, which things are insoluble? Insoluble means they don't dissolve in water. That means if they are produced in a reaction, they are formed as a precipitate. So the word precipitate means a solid that is formed from reaction of two solutions. So these would be precipitates or they would not dissolve in water or their state symbol is S. So which of these? Barium carbonate, calcium carbonate, silver chloride, silver bromide, silver iodide, lead chloride, lead bromide, lead iodide, things like barium sulfate, calcium sulfate, lead sulfate, copper oxide, you should know, is a black solid. All metals are insoluble. Now, we have three methods of preparing salt. We have a method called titration, a method called neutralization, and a method called precipitation. So, when do we use any of these? We use titration if I'm trying to prepare something that is soluble from soluble reactants. So, everything I am using in the reaction is soluble and I'm trying to prepare a soluble salt, then we are going to explain something called titration. But if I'm trying to make a soluble salt, but one of my reactants, is insoluble, so I'm trying to make it from something that is insoluble, then I use a method called neutralization. If I'm trying to prepare an insoluble salt, then we will explain a method called precipitation. So let's take a look at this. So first of all, what is titration? Titration is used if all my reactants and products are all soluble. So, for example, if I want to prepare, if he says prepare sodium chloride crystals, the first thing I need to know is, what do I react to form sodium chloride? Usually, these things are either acids or bases, or reaction of acids and bases. So, which acid do I need to make sodium chloride? I need the acid that has chlorine, so I'm going to use hydrochloric acid. Which base should I use to prepare sodium chloride? Well, I need the base that has sodium. You know that bases are usually oxides or hydroxides. So sodium hydroxide with hydrochloric acid should give me a solution of sodium chloride. The question is, how much should I add from the acid to the base in order to end up with a neutral solution? I don't want to add too much acid and I don't want to add too much base. So I go through a process called titration in which we use a burette, a flask, and a pipette. So what we're going to do is we're going to fill a burette with acid and then put a specific amount of sodium hydroxide into the flask using the pipette. So the first thing I'm going to explain to him, and you need to explain in this way, one by one, in the correct order. I want to place 25.0 centimeter cubed of sodium hydroxide. 25.0 means exactly 25 centimeter cubed of sodium hydroxide in a flask using a pipette. Then we need 
an indicator because both of these solutions are colorless. So I need to see a color change. So we're going to add three drops of an indicator. Now, which indicator can we use? We can use either methyl orange or thymol thaline. So in this case, I'm saying add three drops methyl orange. If you add methyl orange to a solution of sodium hydroxide, the solution turns yellow. Then I'm going to tell him add dilute HCl from a burette until the yellow color turns to orange and know the amount of acid used. So now I know how much acid I should add to 25 centimeter cubed of sodium hydroxide. What I'm going to do is I'm going to repeat by adding the required amount of acid to 25 centimeter cubed of sodium hydroxide without using an indicator. Heat the solution to point of crystallization. So I'm going to explain to him how to do crystallization. Please note when we are trying to do crystallization, heat the solution to point of crystallization, cool to form crystals, filter the crystals, wash with a few drops of distilled water and dry between filter papers. This is if he's telling me to prepare pure dry crystals of sodium chloride. So this is the method of titration. You should know that when we do a titration, the flask should be placed on a white tile or a white paper. If he says why, this is of course to see the color change clearly. I want to see exactly when the yellow turns to orange. The flask should be swirled while adding the solution from the burette. Why? In order to mix the content. So these are things, precautions that you should take while doing titration. Also, when reading a burette, the eyes should be on the same level as the meniscus. So he says a precaution, the eyes should be on the same level as the meniscus. Remember, the meniscus is that round top of the liquid. And we're supposed to read the bottom of the meniscus. So for example, this one is 24 point two for example so this is the bottom of the minute also in any titration experiment we sometimes need to repeat the titration or to do another titration with another solution so to perform more than one titration the burette should be first rinsed with water to remove traces of the previous solution then we rinse it again with the solution to be used in order to remove the water because if i keep water in the burette that will change the concentration of the solution please note all of these we usually have these questions in uh, paper six so for example here he's saying aqueous ammonium phosphate can be made in the laboratory by reacting aqueous ammonia with aqueous phosphoric acid what is the name of this piece of apparatus a of course you should know a is something that has a tap and graduations this is called a burette remember if it has a tap but no graduations it is referred to as a dropping funnel not a burette so just the ph value of phosphoric acid we said before that phosphoric acid is a strong acid so i can say ph1 or ph2 or ph3 Describe how the pH of the mixture in the flask changes as the acid is added. Of course, the flask has aqueous ammonia. So do you remember what the pH of aqueous ammonia was? Aqueous ammonia is around pH 8 or pH 9. But as I add acid which has pH 2, what will happen to the pH in the solution? It will start to decrease until it reaches the neutral pH of this is a typical question. He says, oven cleaners contain an aqueous solution of sodium hydroxide. Plan an investigation to show which of two different oven cleaners contains the most concentrated solution of sodium hydroxide. So we have two solutions, two different solutions of sodium hydroxide, and I want to know which of them is more concentrated. You're provided with common laboratory apparatus and chemicals. So, of course, if I have two sodium hydroxide solutions and I want to know which one is more concentrated, what I do is I do titration of the first solution, find out how much of the acid it will need to neutralize, repeat it again with the other solution, and the one that what? 
the one that uses more acid is more concentrated. So how do I explain that? Put 25 centimeter cubed of the first sodium hydroxide solution into a flask using a pipette. Add three drops. In this case, I'm saying thymolphthalein. I want you to remember that thymolphthalein is a new addition to the syllabus uh, of 2023. Now, if I add thymolphthalein to sodium hydroxide, the solution turns blue. Then I add the dilute acid from a burette and be specific which acid you're using. So in this case, I'm using dilute HCl from a burette until the blue color disappears. Remember the thymolphthalein in neutral and acid, it is colored. Know the volume of acid used. So now I know this specific sample of sodium hydroxide will need how much acid. Now I'm going to repeat using 25 centimeter cubed of the other alkali solution. The one that uses more acid is more concentrated. So, if we have two solutions, A and B, and I want to know which one is more concentrated, I do a titration with the same acid. The one that uses more acid is more concentrated. But sometimes he has in the burette two different acids, A and B, and he wants to know which one is more concentrated. In this case, I have the same solution of sodium hydroxide in the flask. Now, the first sodium hydroxide used about, what, 28 centimeter cubed of acid A. But for the uh, second acid, I needed only less of it to neutralize my sodium hydroxide. Remember that the one that I need less of is more concentrated. So more of acid A was needed, that means acid A is less concentrated than acid B. So in this case, the one that is more concentrated, I will need only a small amount of it. So in this case, B is more concentrated. Another method of preparing salts is neutralization. So in neutralization, I am starting with something that's insoluble. For example, I want to prepare copper sulfate crystal. Now, what am I going to use to prepare copper sulfate? Well, copper sulfate, I need, first of all, which acid? I need sulfuric acid. And then, what am I going to react with the acid? Remember that acids can react with bases or metals or carbonates. So, in this case, I can say sulfuric acid plus copper oxide, which is a base, or copper carbonate. Carbonates will react with acids. But remember that I cannot say sulfuric acid plus copper metal. Copper metal does not react with acids. Please remember, copper is less reactive than hydrogen. Copper metal does not react with sulfuric acid. But if I were trying to make, for example, zinc sulfate, I can say zinc plus sulfuric acid. If I'm trying to make magnesium sulfate, I can say magnesium plus sulfuric acid. But I cannot say copper. So, okay, so we're going to use copper oxide with sulfuric acid. Now, of course, copper, sulfide, uh, copper oxide is something that does not dissolve in water, so I cannot do titration. I have to do it in a different manner. I get a beaker. I add a certain amount of sulfuric acid, so let's say uh, 25 centimeter cubed of sulfuric acid, and I add solid copper oxide using a spatula. Now, as I add the copper oxide, the copper oxide when it reacts with sulfuric acid, it will dissolve to form copper sulfate solution, which is blue. But as I add more and more of the copper oxide, at some point, all the sulfuric acid has reacted, no more sulfuric acid to react, so the excess solid remains in the beaker. So how do I know if the reaction has finished? If excess solid remains in the beaker. Now, what do I want? I want the solution so I can get rid of that unreacted copper oxide by filtration. So in that case, my residue is something I don't want. It is the excess copper oxide I added. And the filtrate is my copper sulfate solution. So once I take the filtrate, I can heat the filtrate to point of crystallization, cool, filter the crystals. Now, if he says he wants pure dry crystals, I can say, Wash with a few drops of distilled water and dry between filter paper. 
This question says a salt is made by adding an excess of insoluble metal oxide to acid. How is the excess metal oxide removed from the mixture? How did we remove the excess copper oxide? When we put the copper oxide until it was excess, I removed it by filtration. My answer is D. The other method is precipitation. For precipitation, what I'm trying to prepare is insoluble. So, for example, we said silver chloride is insoluble. Now, to make silver chloride, I have to start with two things that are soluble. So, I need silver something that is soluble, and we said all nitrates are soluble, so I can use silver nitrate. And I want something chloride that is soluble, so sodium chloride, we said all sodium salts are soluble. And in this case, all I do is I add the silver nitrate solution to sodium chloride solution. The silver chloride forms as a white precipitate. Remember, we said the precipitate is a solid that is formed from reaction of two solutions. Now I can filter, and in this case, what I want is the residue. So now the silver chloride precipitate is residue. Wash the residue with a few drops of distilled water and dry it between filter papers. So this question says, which two processes are involved in the preparation of magnesium sulfate from dilute sulfuric acid and excess magnesium oxide? Remember, excess magnesium oxide means we're talking about which method? We're talking about the neutralization method. So how did we do that? We did neutralization and filtration because magnesium oxide is in salt. Which method is used to make the salt copper sulfate? So to make copper sulfate, can I react dilute acid plus alkali? Remember, an alkali is a base that dissolves in water. How did we make copper sulfate? We made copper sulfate from sulfuric acid plus copper oxide. Copper oxide does not dissolve in water, so it is not an alkali. So A is wrong. Dilute acid plus carbonate. Yes, we said we can do sulfuric acid plus copper carbonate. Can we use dilute acid plus metal? Remember, we said I cannot say dilute acid plus copper metal because copper metal will not react in acid. Dilute acid plus non-metal oxide, well, I need the metal oxide, not a non-metal oxide. So out of these choices, I can use carbonate plus acid. The diagram shows the steps in preparation of a salt. So first, he's crushing in step one. He's heating in step two. He's filtering in step three. And he's crystallizing in step four. So which salt is prepared by this method? So which method is this? Is this titration or neutralization or precipitation? Obviously, this is a neutralization method in which he added in step two, he added excess of one of the reactants. So which of these do we prepare using neutralization? Of course, it is copper sulfate. Remember that A, barium sulfate, is insoluble. So if I were trying to make barium sulfate, I would use precipitation. Potassium sulfate in C, potassium sulfate is soluble and it will be from soluble things. So it will be titration. Sodium sulfate, also titration. So the only one that I can prepare using neutralization out of these choices is copper sulfate. Okay, that's the end of this. Uh, please study all of this and I hope um, it was useful to you. Thank you for listening.